Super Punch-Out was released in North America on September 14, 1994, a pivotal year that saw several strong releases for the Super NES that helped Nintendo turn the tide in the 16-bit war against Sega. Sega! Punch-Out creator Genyo Takeda wanted a perfect transition from arcade to console for Super Punch-Out on Nintendo's 16-bit platform, which previously hadn't been possible for its 8-bit predecessor. The original Punch-Out arcade was ported to the NES in 1987, but hardware limitations forced a ton of changes to what would ultimately become Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. <laughs> now with the power of the Super NES, Takeda and his development team were able to create a seamless transition from arcade to home console. Super Punch-Out earned raving reviews for its cartoon-like style, its colorful outlandish opponents, simple gameplay controls, and overall replay value, cementing its place as one of the best Super NES games ever made. Alright. Hello everyone and welcome. <laughs> First thing to point out is for a channel that's 15 years old, this is only Super Nintendo full playthrough number two. <laughs> it's pretty funny to realize. Alright, let's name him not Mac. Because let's face it, it's not. It's pretty obvious just looking at him. <laughs> oh, this poor guy. Well, he does have the benefit of being the first opponent, and I'm gonna need to shake a little bit of rust off. I didn't uh, train for this one per se, as I've been known to do with some of the games if it's been a super long time since I've played them. So, gonna be doing most of this from muscle memory, and I'm sure it's gonna take me uh, a fight or two to get myself back on track. Oh, not a bad start. Let's see if we can make short work of him. Boom. Sweetness. Glass <laughs> uh, Joe would be so proud. Uh, he's finally found his uh, curtain jerker replacement. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is a fresh ROM with... Uh, Brand new data, so all the names you'll see on the, the record list are the default ones. So I don't think I'll have much trouble breaking into that list more often than not. Alright, come on you big oaf. So Bear Hugger's got a pretty interesting backstory in the instruction manual here. Imagine this shit being printed today. It reads, and I quote, Originally a carpenter, Bear Hugger grew up beating up on all the animals in the forest. His favorite, however, was his pet grizzly bear. End quote. Now, <laughs> never mind the outrage people would feel in something like that coming out today, especially by Nintendo. But it's pretty hard to suspend disbelief about the grizzly bear part after knowing the Timothy Treadwell story. So, even in a jocular sense, with a fictitious video game bio, yeah, I gotta balk at the notion of any human beating up a grizzly bear. You can play mind games with one and possibly convince it to spare you, but once it's decided... YOU'RE NEXT! <laughs> Mr. Biscuits and Gravy slumped down in that corner over there is gonna have big problems. You know, but cute story for a video game character. Huh, not too bad. Alright, moving on. And here's one of the OG boys. Piston Hurricane was in the original arcade version of Punch-Out. Bear Hugger didn't come along until the second arcade game. But this guy was in the original back in, uh, geez, what was it, 84? Oh. And 
this is the point in the minor circuit where the challenge supposedly ramps up a little bit. And I guess it does if, if it's like your very first playthrough or one many years later and you've kind of forgotten the mechanics, but if you're familiar with the series at all, that's pretty hard to do. Boom. Set your ass down. Twenty seconds. I'll take it. Mm. Good coffee. Sorry, Dano. It's a new sheriff in town. And here's another original boy in the original Punch Out arcade game. one of the guys who was fortunate enough to get carried over to the NES pseudo port of that game, which we all know is Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Obviously a lot of stuff had to be changed for that port, as I touched on in the intro. Due to the limitations of the NES, they couldn't uh, make an exact port of that game, so... A lot of stuff had to be changed and kind of watered down to fit the hardware limitations, but they definitely scored a hit with it. The game's one of the all-time classics, as is this one. You know, I'm one of the people who will tell you I, I don't think Super Punch-Out gets enough credit for being just a, a pure fun game to pick up and play. Um, a lot of people say that it's pop. A lot of people say that it's not hard enough, and I guess compared to uh, some of the other games, especially Punch-Out on the Wii, uh, I'll agree with that. But having said that, it's an extremely fun game, and I think the challenge is, uh, is good in all the right spots. Obviously with anything that you've done for 30 plus years, well I guess nearly 30 years with this one. Uh, you're not going to have a whole lot of trouble with it, so... A seasoned vet like me, I mean, one could watch this and say, wow, this game's really easy, but keep in mind, I've been doing this for three decades off and on, so... If you haven't played it before and you pick it up for the first time, you'll probably walk away with the feeling that the challenge isn't exactly lacking. As with anything, you can get used to it, but... I think the challenge is right where it needs to be. <laughs> I like this guy. Of course, it doesn't matter how much dancing you do. Oh, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> oh. All voices that we hear in the game are performed by Charles Martinet, a man who later earned celebrity status as the voice of Mario, most notably in Super Mario 64. <laughs> Uh, poor guy. He seems like a genuinely nice fellow. I don't know what it is about that character. He, he's a, he's really likable. He makes funny noises and he doesn't talk trash. You know, just uh, always a friendly sparring session with that dude. But back to Charles Martinet. I never made the connection from this game that he was the voice of Mario back in the 90s. I feel that makes Super Punch out a, a pretty great example, really, of the kind of range he has. And there's not really any obvious hints in his work here that, uh, that would tip your ears into recognizing him as that Mario voice. Not for me, anyway. <laughs> I love that rapid power punch. Oh, work him over. Yeah. Can't take too much of that. <laughs> oh, come on. There you go. 
I'll try to keep the uhs in check. I know that's got to get annoying. I hear them on the post-production sometimes. I'm like, God, I do that a lot. So I will try to keep that uh, as contained as possible. But this is one of those games. You know, it's hard to hold back when you land a good power punch. As we come to the palette swap of Super Macho Man. Which has been a constant in the series. You've always got two guys that look exactly similar throughout the game. And back when we were kids, it used to be fun to play through the game and kind of identify them. <laughs> Man, wearing that body out. <sighs> yes. Only thing missing is that original announcer. Body blow! Body blow! Come on, what else you got? Man, rock hard as those abs are. <laughs> Falling apart like a house of cards here. Is he gonna make it? Nope. <laughs> a few years ago, Mike Tyson seemed to be under the impression that Nintendo was working on a new punch out game and acted a bit surprised that he hadn't been contacted to be in it. And though people had a bit of a puzzled reaction to it since Tyson's been retired almost 20 years, and if Nintendo wanted to use a real fighter to market a new Punch-Out game, conventional wisdom would suggest they'd probably go with a current star heavyweight and all that, but I say malarkey! Because in the current age where nostalgia sells and remakes are practically rolling off an assembly line, I think it's high time Nintendo delivers a modern remake of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out for the Switch. That would be badass, and an instant buy for me and tons of other gamers of all ages, not just people my age. Have you seen how many millions of views the clips of Mike and his prime have on YouTube? Everybody knows who the guy is. He's still very culturally relevant. In some kind of anniversary edition remake of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out in the modern era would do very well. Well, that took long enough. Oh. <laughs> Damn, he's lucky J-80 ain't the ref. This shit would have been over right there. Uh, try to get that guard up. He's adaptive. Alright, here we go. Watch those uppercuts. Oh, yeah. Rip him up. Say goodnight. Well, one thing that was probably unintended is the Punch-Out! series is true to life. Uh, the way you win belts, as meaningless as they are in the real sport. I remember when there used to be one heavyweight champion of the world. Now each weight class has got like 17 belts apiece. None of them mean anything. Sure, and your wimpy little punches won't even phase me, boyo. Yeah, we'll see about that. Aaron Ryan. Step up. That's right, wimpy little punches all day. One, two, three, four, Let's see if we can do the same thing to him. Boom. One, two, three, four, Better stay down. Ah, he wants some more. Thanks for coming. Pass me a Killian's, would you? Ice cold, please. K-1. 
can lob. This guy always reminds me of gold dust. Always has. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Let's see what you got. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah, show it to me. And screw this. Nice moves, though. Alright, got one more left in ya. He got the Bud Light! So, the identity of the player character, he's, uh, it's a common source of contention amongst both fans and official sources alike. Bryce Holiday, one of the main developers of Punch-Out for the Wii, has stated that this character is not Little Mac, and I agree. However, Nintendo of America and Europe both stated that he is Little Mac during the game's virtual console releases back in 2009, I think. Also, according to Nintendo of America, Super Punch-Out takes place after both the NES and Wii titles, claiming that <laughs> Little Mac received a makeover and parted ways from Doc Lewis. Yeah, okay. Not only does he, quote, get a makeover, but his entire record resets, and he's cast back down to the bottom of the barrel, and guys like Bald Bull, Mr. Sandman, and Super Macho Man are all still around, <laughs> and seemingly they're all still in their prime. Yeah, I don't buy it. But interestingly, the early beta photos and trailers for the game show the fighter is Little Mac, as he looks a lot more like his original NES self. But it's unknown when or why this was changed. My personal opinion, knowing Nintendo, they probably didn't think he looked goofy enough. And if he didn't look silly enough here, somebody's beer got held when he showed up on the GameCube version of Fight Night Round 2 in 2005. Still sporting that stupid hair and what's up with those eyes? Jeez. Somebody needs to make a mod for him. Turn his appearance into a uh, killer clown from outer space. <laughs> That'd be cool. Well, look who it is. Super Macho Man. <laughs> Think highly of yourself, do you? Body blows. kid. Look ridiculous. Who thought that was a good idea to turn him into a freaking goofy surfer dude? Not that I have a problem with surfing or people who do it, but this, this cartoonish looking stereotype. I don't know. But it's hard to argue with his results in the ring. Special circuit is here. And 
for those of you that don't know, you have to clear each circuit without losing to be able to unlock this special circuit. And you get to fight this chump. See if I can catch him. Oh. Oh, there it is. <laughs> That's what you get, pretty boy. Love that reaction every time. And that one. <laughs> He's one of my favorite characters just because of the way he sounds. Love the voice work with him. So, completely random tidbit to share with you. This guy in the audience right here. Every time I see his face and hair, he reminds me of a teacher I had back in middle school. Like, seriously. And what makes it weird in 2023 is I haven't spoken to him since I went there which was easily 30 years ago. But still, whenever I play this game, man, my memory triggers and, and makes this weird connection. I guess because he was a really fun teacher, though you wouldn't know it from the soulless expression he's got in this photo, but he was a really cool guy. <laughs> this guy's music cracks me up. Take a listen. Back when I was a kid, well, this game came out when I was, what, 14, I guess? He used to be the hardest guy in the game for me. Yeah, it took me a minute to learn everything he does and get to the point where I could anticipate it. Pop. Right, watch it backhand. didn't count as a hit. And for a second, he was taking those body blows better than some of the youngsters in this game. Alright, one more time. Oh yeah, it's over. I didn't even realize I had the Maximum power punch. Pizza cake. And almost a full minute faster. Uh, whatever. Alright. Showtime. Yeah, I bet you are. Hell, he may be. Let's find out. Yeah, you gotta watch that counter punch. <laughs> Hard to land a sucker punch on this guy. Tries to make you pay. Nope. Excellent. How's he gonna get up? <laughs> Having a difficulty. <laughs> All right, let's put this dude away. Mm. One last attempt. Throwing those elbows, man. How's he getting away with that? Well, 
What am I saying? You got a guy who can kickbox, a guy who can spit in your face, and a guy who can whack the shit out of you with a stick. I'm not going to question somebody with an elbow. All right, boy, it's boss time. Time to play the game, son. See if I can catch him. Oh, there it is. Yes. Now well, maybe I can make short work of him. Here we go. Ha oh, Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Come on, get up, boy. I got some more for if you get up. Let's try to put him away early. Nice. Oh. Hell yes. Look at that. Come on, get up. Oh, shit. <laughs> Nine seconds. Oh, man. That might be my fastest time ever on him. I'm not sure. But it's hard to catch him with that counter shot. It depends on if he's going to throw high or low. I always bet on him throwing high, and I catch him with that right counter. But sometimes, obviously, it doesn't work. But when it does... You could life hack his ass. I didn't mind listening to all the points tally on that one. Nine point six six. It might be my best time ever on him. I don't know. I, I don't have a, a record log, but I don't recall doing it under ten at any point in the past. I think thirteen might have been my previous record. Well, I'm glad I actually caught it on a recording. Man. It would have been relegated to a screenshot any other time. Gotta admire this boy's spirit. And then the grizzly bear champion. Yeah, right. Must be a direct relative of uh, Mr. Zangief. From Russia. Two debug modes were discovered by unlisted cheats on August 8th, 2022. That's right, after nearly 30 years, somebody finally found some Easter eggs in this game. To enable the first mode, at the title screen you hold Y and R on controller 2 and press start on controller 1. If you do it correctly, you'll be taken to a single match menu with all 16 boxers. To enable the second mode, hold Y plus B on controller 2 until controller 1 starts the match. If you do it right, player 2 has the ability to control the opponent fighter with all their moves. Pretty cool stuff, and I haven't had a lot of time to mess with it just yet, but uh, definitely going to be changing that here soon. This is one of those games that invokes much nostalgia. Love to play through it and uh, enjoy all the wonderful memories that I have attached to it. Good night. And for some of its criticisms, I think the people overlook the fun factor. This game's a lot of fun to play. Obviously, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out's kind of the cultural classic, and rightfully so. Uh, Punch-Out on the Wii was an excellent game with a lot of stuff factored into it that made it even more fun than I was expecting. <laughs> Having said that, this is the one I play the most out of all of them, so... If you've not given this one a look, due to some stuff you may have read or heard, um, if you enjoy boxing games, if you enjoy video games, no reason not to check this one out and it's available in plenty of places so shouldn't have any trouble finding it <laughs> no. 
You've punched me face. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah, he's not so scary anymore, but tell you back in the day, boy Carlo used to give me fits. It was almost a relief when I got to the Bruiser Twins. As he should be. That was a mauling. Very fitting comment for what transpired. <laughs> Call yourself a champ. Well, it can happen to anybody. In a nutshell, if I had to sum up this game with one word, fun. Smooth play control, amusing visuals, good soundtrack, and voice acting by an industry legend make Super Punch-Out an ensemble to remember. And as much as I love the NES Classic, if I had to pick just one Punch-Out game to play for the rest of my life, honestly, it'd be this one. Hope everyone enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, be well, and we'll see you next time. Yay!